Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with rank 5 of our F1 Manager 24 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the Shanghai Grand Prix, of course, here in China, the first sprint of the new season. If you missed out on the video that went live yesterday from Japan, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. We've had quite a decent start to the campaign. Admittedly, Japan was a little bit of a quieter one, but already... There is a new regulation vote coming up in the not-too-distant future. What will this be regarding, then, as we head into the rest of the season? It's a minor technical change, uh, and it is a uh, regulation on how the cars generate downforce. So, we've obviously got quite a few drastic tweaks there. Um, some of which affect the low speed, some of which affect the high speed nature of the car, of course. These will affect how we go about, you know, developing the car, setting the car up ready for next season. So, I think for us, it's probably going to be the high speed downforce changes that we want to see nerfed a bit more inside this series. So, obviously, we'll get confirmation uh, very soon as to how that is going to affect things as well there. Now, we've obviously got a little bit of money in the bank, so we can afford to apply a couple more upgrades to the cars in the not-too-distant future. Uh, you can see it was Liam Lawson's rear wing uh, that recently failed uh, some new quality controls. So, yeah, obviously we'll get a new one on the car ready for this weekend as well there. Uh, unfortunately, though, we have actually had a temporary shutdown on some facility parts as well, because if we have a look back, uh, we actually had a design center fire uh, between last weekend and this one out. So we've had to take nine days of shutdown uh, on both the design center and the projects as well, which is a little bit of a shame as we head into this weekend. So hopefully we'll get to wait and see uh, as to what the new rule changes vote has been confirmed. Uh, and we'll say there as well, we've only got one chassis uh, as well available on the car. Uh, but obviously we've already got more of those being built up. Ready to go as well there. Um, so I think hopefully we're going to be able to see, able to see some upgrades going onto the car. Uh, obviously uh, we, we can try and get those set up before Shanghai. So there we go. Uh, all projects can now be resumed in this part of the team as well then. So obviously we've already done some upgrades. I think we've done uh, underfloor and chassis haven't we prior to now. So I think this time around... We're going to try and do a couple on the suspension uh, and maybe some downforce components as well. There, As always, uh, we're just going to try and make sure that we use exactly half and half uh, or everything. So we're making sure, you know, we're getting all of the utilization out of all of those components. Uh, and that obviously we're also making sure that we're using half of our engineers as well. There, So a million dollars is going to be spent on that. Uh, first of all, on a new suspension upgrade. And then we're going to try and spend the rest of it, I think, on a new front wing upgrade as well there. So, yeah, we'll burn through everything else, which you'll see. will give us, you know, some decent, actually, 7.5% tyre uh, preservation is really, really useful here early on in the game. This car can still be a little bit aggressive on its tyres. Uh, they will be done in about a month, so we're going to see ourselves, I think, go through both of the sprint weekends uh, before those are ready on the car as well there. Now... We've got a couple of other little bits and pieces we need to go through. Uh, first of all, of course, is trying to escape uh, for some young affiliate drivers uh, as well. So who are the highest rated non-F1 drivers at the moment? Uh, obviously, we've got Sonoda there. We are looking towards Zane Maloney uh, is one of the best ones. Dennis Hauger, though, is without a... Um, Without a kind of team at the moment. He's not affiliated with anybody. And of course he was an ex-Red Bull driver. Um, so I guess we'll start scouting him. Uh, and then I want to try and look further down as well. Uh, in towards sort of F3. So hopefully. Um, you know in the future. We're going to have some F3 drivers as well. Obviously rising their way through the ranks. So I think uh, Leonardo Fornaroli. He's not doing badly uh, in F2. Uh, have we got anybody else? Christian Mansell as well, I think, has got a lot of potential. So I think uh, we can't scout them at the moment. Because, uh, yeah, we haven't got enough scouts available uh, within the team as well there. Anything else that we need to look at before this weekend? I think everything uh, has been dealt with. So let's head out then on... Oh, no, quickly, obviously, we need to make sure we know what these rule changes are uh, as well. So there we go. Manufacturing complete of the underfloor. That's good news. Um, and last but not least then... The regulation vote. So, we have got confirmation then that um, it is going to be... Okay, 
So it's actually going to be the one we didn't vote for there. Five against six. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah, we didn't even make the difference in the end. Ferrari, Mercedes, Alpine, Williams, Haas, and Aston Martin. So it's not like all of the top teams voted for it and all of the bottom teams didn't. It did seem like quite an even split. Get yourself subscribed if you're new to the channel as well. And let's head in then to see how the sprint weekends work inside F1 Manager 24. We're just getting settled here in Shanghai ahead of the Chinese Grand Prix. A visit to Shanghai International Circuit can only mean it's time for the Chinese Grand Prix. This state-of-the-art track combines high G-force corners with one of the longest straights on the calendar. And with space for up to 200,000 spectators, not a minute of action will be missed. In this round, the teams have two races to contend with, with both the Sprint and the Grand Prix offering the chance to bag some championship points. Let's get on with the weekend. Well, here we are then, down on the grid, or sorry, down in the garage even, I should say, then, ready for this weekend. So, yeah, we have obviously got the one free practice session, then we got sprint, Q1, Q2, Q3, then obviously the sprint race, then real Q1, Q2, Q3, and then obviously the race on Sunday as well. So a lot to get through uh, this weekend, so we need to make sure both cars and drivers are set up quite happily here. Obviously, there is quite a lot of top speed sections around this circuit. So I think we're going to run, run quite a diverse wing angle. So we've got the rotation uh, through the first sector. Um, but obviously, then not lacking speed around the rest of the lap as well. I think this is going to be one of the longest F1 Manager videos we've done so far uh, on this year's game. But then again, you know, you guys have been saying you really are enjoying the longer videos still. Uh, which is always good to see as well. So let's head into FP1. And we'll see how we get on then. Of course, yeah, free practice. You know, we do very much kind of just simulate our way through. But it is super important to make sure we got the car set up ready uh, for the rest of the weekend there as well. Uh, last night, we actually streamed the first episode of our new Ferrari career mode as well. Uh, so, yeah, that that full VOD will be going live in the near future. But you can check out, like, the live version of it as well. Um, but, yeah, obviously, I've got a, a full edited version of that going out very soon. So, first of all, who on earth is that in the um, McLaren? I don't know who that is. I'm trying to think. Who Who is that going to be? Drivers? No, nope, car condition? No, nope, nothing like that. It is... Oh, Pato Award, of course. So, very, very interesting then uh, that McLaren are giving him a run out. Oli Behrman as well. Isaac Hadjar again in the Red Bull with Fred Vesti down in the Merc. Kushmine in the Alpine... Uh, and then Teo Porsche down at Sauber there alongside Jack Crawford uh, inside the Aston Martin car. So plenty of juniors once again uh, getting a run out. We, yeah, like I said, we're probably going to offer Hauger a contract. And we can try to use him a little bit further down the line as well, which would be nice. Um, but yeah, obviously this weekend though, uh, Yuki is still trying to learn obviously the new car setup as well. Um, but yeah, a couple of weekends without upgrades has certainly made things rather difficult for us as well. But, you know, unlike some of the AI teams, they have patched the game. So hopefully they are going to kind of implement new um, new strategies, new components, things like that quicker now. Uh, but you can still see yeah, Esteban Ocon carrying over damage from previous weekends. I mean, surely, uh, if you were going to take some penalties, surely a sprint weekend is probably the one you would actually want to do it in uh, if you know that the car isn't going to be competitive as well there. But good laps getting underway. We are seemingly quite far down the order. So, so I can only hope that, yeah, the setup is not great. Uh, Lawson then not happy with the car. So we will bring him back in. Yeah, it's a tricky track to obviously work out the balance as well. Which is never ideal. So we'll bring him in. Uh, see what he's got to say about the car. So he'll get his way back into the box. No time can be left wasted around this circuit and yeah rather unsurprisingly not running enough downforce uh traction that was really really important actually is the team want us to have next to no cornering ability which seems rather peculiar uh so not too sure how i feel about that i guess we'll run really really high uh, i mean yeah we need all the traction we can possibly get out of the car as well um so i guess that's probably a better balance so we'll get him fixed up and we'll send him back out there then. Like I said, this circuit is just near impossible to really figure out there. As Sonoda getting towards the end of his run. He's not quite able again. We need to make sure his run plans uh, are just a little bit longer as well there. But Sonoda back into the pit lane then. So, yeah, again, slightly too much. Uh, but he has got a lot more traction 
in that car. So I guess we'll go with that then on Yuki's side of things. Uh, I forgot to update his run plan again though, so we'll make sure we get that done uh, very, very quickly. Obviously once the setup is all sorted. But Liam heading back out there then for the second half of this session. I mean, Pato Award and Isaac Hadjar, they're both looking very, very competitive. The same for Oleg Behrman. We've got three juniors inside the top four here in FP1, which is rather impressive. Uh, and yeah, we'll just make sure uh, that his run plan now is going to be 17 laps. We'll try that. Make sure that he's happy with the car as well. So back out there. We'll go Yuki Sonoda. Back out there, Liam Lawson uh, as well then. But... Yeah, but you've only got the one free practice session. We might not be able to get everything perfected, obviously, before we move into sprint qualifying. You, I mean, we don't even get a chance um, for the AI as well to kind of obviously fine-tune it through FP2 and FP3 there. So, yeah, it's going to be a real tall order here as we make our way towards the end of free practice uh, to make sure that we have got the car set up. But, you know, that adds to the intrigue of a sprint weekend as well. That we should be able to get, you know, again, another full set of feedback from Liam uh, but maybe just we'll struggle again with Yuki in the other car there. So, yeah, that's really, really compromising us with Yuki early on this season. He's really, really struggling uh, to kind of get everything fine-tuned, which is frustrating, uh, to say the least there. Lawson, though, seemingly getting towards the end of his run plan. I mean, we're 21st and 19th at the moment. Zhou Guan Yu, I'm sure there are going to be eyes on him this weekend. Probably not good that he's slower than Teo Porcher. Uh, at this stage of the session. But Lawson then getting to the end of his run plan. He's right, happier guys, now uh, with the car. Okay. There we go. So yeah, Lawson happier with the machine he's got underneath him. So we'll just make sure that those numbers are finalised. Uh, and we will make sure... Uh, there we go. He's, he's, he's much happier with the car. Uh, he's 69% prepped as well. So I guess now we're just trying to make sort of small tweaks... Uh, to potentially affect things as well. So we'll go like that. Uh, I guess we'll try and bring one click of rear wing off as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think he's going to be pretty happy uh, with how the car is looking uh, as well. Then maybe just now we'll, we'll go like that. There we go. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that Lawson is happy. Obviously able to get back out there and just go for one last ditch run. How is Sonoda getting on as well then uh, in the other car? Said he's, he struggles to provide feedback as quickly as Liam, which really is making things quite difficult here in a lot of weekends. Especially as he's still obviously trying to learn the upgrades he's got on that car. Uh, he's a bit of a problem for him. So Yuki doesn't apparently want to tell me anything about the car he's got underneath him either there. So we'll bring him in and we'll see actually how he really feels about how things are going. Probably hasn't got enough time to get back out there as we've definitely still got way too much cornering ability on the second car. Uh, so we'll go like that. We'll bring up the tyre camber as well. Um, he's actually got too much straight line speed now, which is a little bit odd. So, yeah, it is sometimes quite funny, obviously, the way the AI, obviously, to get this system to work, kind of have to sacrifice something that you think they'd be happy with. Um, tyres as well, he's not happy, so I don't think we'll be able to get him back out there. We'll get the setup figured out, uh, and I'll join you guys in qualifying, or sprint qualifying. Welcome everyone, qualifying for the sprint awaits us, and we're raring to get going. Well, I wanted to just double check quickly as well. I think Liam has got a new car part that should have gone on the car this weekend as well. Though I think we've got a new chassis now uh, ready to go. So we're going to uninstall the second version of the chassis then on his car, which should give him a little bit of an advantage. Yes, probably should have done that as we went into um, into the weekend rather than during it. But, you know, I guess it's where we're at. Both drivers still not very confident with the car, though. So, not convinced um, that we're going to see them make it anywhere close to Q3. I think, to be honest, if we can make it out of Q1, that's probably going to be us pretty happy with how things are looking. Of course, we do only get the one set of the medium tyres as well. But, unlike the normal EA F1 games, you can usually get two runs out of a set of tyres inside F1 managers so that's exactly what we're going to try with both drivers you know we're not going to be in the fight for pole position or anything like that so it is just going to be about trying to make sure um that both of them are seemingly quite happy uh with the car and of course yeah building up more and more confidence as we go throughout the weekend as well there so on to their first runs I think we've just obviously want to make sure as well um, that neither of them get stuck in too much traffic either here as Liam in terms of the car 
think he's pretty happy with how everything's looking as well there, which is always nice. Uh, 24.3 for Sector. I got no idea what benchmarks we're going to be looking at. 24.5 for Yuki. Obviously, we saw Lawson quicker uh, last weekend at Japan as well. I think we're really just starting to see Liam Lawson, you know, building up confidence, starting to find the limits of what he's capable of behind the wheel of a Formula 1 car. And that is fantastic to see. Because, uh, you know, if he can sort of get up to Yuki's level, um, then we are in a really, really good position as the season continues to go on. we got a lot of grip on the circuit as well. Uh, but there obviously is still very, very little rubber down from that one free practice session up to this point. Yuki, 29-3, Sector 2. Liam, 29-3, Sector 2. So he's definitely got a little bit of pace uh, in the back pocket in that car at the moment. So this is really, really good to see there. Yuki might be able to get a little bit of a slipstream down into this final sector of the lap. As Oscar Piastri uh, goes top of the board. They're three seconds clear of Rotomo Miata uh, and Esteban Ocon a little bit further behind. So hopefully we're going to be able to slot into that gap between those cars. Through the final corner we go then. Riding on board with Liam Lawson up towards the line. It is going to be a 1 minute 34.9 I believe. We go quicker than Bottas. Sonoda goes just a couple of tenths away. So that's a pretty good run actually. Uh, for the end of their first ones. Annoyingly, yeah, Ricardo still looks absolutely rapid on this game. But happy with that as a first run on the board there. You know, less than two okay. seconds away uh, from the top runners. He's actually pretty good there as Norris now immediately. He's going to move his way right up towards the front. And after everybody has completed their first runs then, uh, both drivers seemingly quite happy with the car. So we'll just make sure, obviously, they've got enough fuel in ready to go again here there i mean yeah the both of them are really kind of hanging on to the cusp carlos Sainz as well uh he's actually way further down the order than we would have wanted so it might be that yuki should actually be on the bubble but hopefully that's not going to be the case there maybe Sainz can have a bit of a disaster uh, as kind of everybody getting out then for their final runs we're gonna do it we are gonna make sure both drivers go out there like i said you know, Sainz's should go quicker than us. So that will immediately put uh, Yuki right on the bubble. And I'd rather not make it a habit that he goes out in Q1 here in numerous weekends. So everybody making their way then back out onto the track. We'll try and make sure that we ride with Yuki this time around. He has got track position over Liam Lawson this time. So hopefully that is going to play into our hand as well. Because it seemed like last lap uh, he was struggling just a little bit. Um, you know, just to try and get that final bit of grip in the car as well there. That, that little bit of downforce through the snail sections around this venue really can make a whole lot of difference here. But it might well be, you know, the rubber, the circuit is getting more rubbered in. So hopefully there is a chance to go for another run. And it's over. It's completely over. Will Lawson get held up as well? He's got a little bit further back to that Alpine. Please don't tell me one Alpine is going to cost us both on our run here. I think they are, so... He does get out of the way, actually, on the second one. I believe that is... Uh, it's Pierre Gasly, then. So, at least he's not going to go quicker than us. I guess we can guarantee that quite safely at the moment. Uh, but, yeah, Yuki way down Sector 1. Liam, not too bad in comparison. He's definitely down. Um, but, yeah, certainly not as badly there. So, I think we, we're definitely going to get one of the cars through. It's actually Logan Sargent able to improve there. That's going to put Sonoda on the bubble. So, he's going to need a big, big improvement here. As we get around the rest of the lap. And unfortunately it just as seem as now he drops into that bottom group. Sight still down the order. Yuki. Yeah I mean Yuki's lap is just abandoned isn't it. He's not able to improve. Liam to be fair. Uh, isn't seemingly finding anything either. So I think that's real disappointment then for Yuki. Towards the end of this run. Uh, and I think yeah unfortunately it is going to be all but over for him there. As Sight now moves his way up to the front of the running order. He's got to try and find another couple of tents here. Yeah, I mean, he's just absolutely swearing his head off a little bit further behind. I mean, there is no cars around him anymore. So, I'm not sure what we make of that one. Will we see Yuki, though, able to cause the upset of the season through the final corner up towards the line? I think it is once again going to be him out in Q1. He doesn't even improve his time there. So, Yuki out. Liam Lawson, though, he does improve, I think, marginally there by, like, less than a tenth of a second. So, I guess that's good for him as Albon now up into P13. So, have we got any other drivers on runs? Don't think we do, which I guess is good for us. So, Ocon down at the bottom of the field. Miata, I mean, look at that. He's, what, two to two seconds behind Daniel Ricciardo there. But we do safely get Lawson into Q2. Just gutted, yeah, Yuki again out in Q1. But Zhou Guan Yu as well. Homeboy will join him. 
we go. Yeah, really not the ideal Q1 we would have wanted. Uh, Lando Norris fastest there ahead of Verstappen and Oscar Piastri. Uh, Liam Lawson, though, I don't actually think did improve on his second run. They're half a second away from Kevin Magnussen in front. So I think we're just going to give him one run out in Q2 right towards the end of the session. Uh, and yeah, I, I certainly don't think we're going to see Q3. The circuit seems pretty rubbered in then as we head into Q2. I don't think we're going to see the grip levels really get any better uh, as this session goes on. They're pretty much, yeah, staying normal uh, right in towards the end of the session. So we're just going to try and make sure that we get Lawson out there uh, when he's nowhere near anybody else. Every single car has gone out for a lap. So yeah, that's kind of why we just took the opportunity early on in the session, obviously. I kind of forget sometimes uh, that the sprint qualifyings obviously are so much shorter than a normal qualifying run here in F1. So, you know, you, you it's, it's really quite tight, actually, of trying to get two lap times on the board, especially, you know, in the AI, you've got to do the in-laps uh, and things like that. And obviously, they do tend to go quite slowly here. So, Lawson, then, how are the split times looking? Decent sector one, actually, 24.2. Uh, is quicker than any other point we've seen so far this weekend, as Bottas... We'll go top of the board then. Just half a tenth clear of uh, Nico Hulkenberg. Ricardo, that's going to be about the time we're aiming for to be as close to him as we can. It's a 29-2 as well through Sector 2. So, yeah, Liam Lawson is really, really finding time here as the sessions continue to move forward. Verstappen fastest ahead of Sergio Perez, though, right up towards the up uh, towards the top of the running. Is Charles Leclerc there up into fourth ahead of Lando Norris as well. And then we've got a second gap between Ricardo and Norris there. Annoyingly, the Aston Martins are going to slot in. Liam Lawson, though, making his way in towards the final corner. What is the time going to be on the board for our Kiwi then as he makes it into Q2 for the second time in a row? Down towards the start-finish line. It is going to be a 1 minute 34. He will go P13 there. Only four tenths away from Lewis Hamilton. Quicker than most of his other rivals, though, as both Mercs down the drop zone right now. Albon and Ricardo, I'm sure, will be watching on. Um, but I'm happy with that. We'll take a look at what the final order looks like and we'll get into the sprint. Hello and welcome as our Grand Prix weekend continues and the sprint will soon be upon us. Of course, this is the first sprint of the season, adding an extra challenge for the drivers and their teams. But as ever, in Formula One, an extra challenge is an extra opportunity. The big draw today is the opportunity to grab some extra championship points. After all, they could make the difference when the season comes to a close. Well, it's not too long now until the sprint around Shanghai, where we'll see who comes out on top. Well, in the end, we did find ourselves all the way down in P15. Yeah, Lawson quicker than Bottas once again, like he was in sprint Q1. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, made no difference uh, come the end of the session there. Verstappen on pole, uh, less than a tenth, though, clear of Oscar Piastri. So clearly his pace from Japan uh, has been absolutely evaporated this weekend. McLaren and Red Bull both seem to be in the fight. There is Hamilton actually ended up out in sprint Q2 as well. But in terms of strategy, I mean, it's just mediums, isn't it? I'm tempted, actually, with Yuki. We have got one set of the hards. I think we'll need those for the race. We've got a couple of sets of mediums. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to keep them both on a fairly simple strategy. Uh, not really much of an opportunity to fuel save, but I guess we'll try to um, with both drivers as well. But ultimately, you know, sprint weeks, you know, early on in the season, I think they're going to feel a bit like busy work, to be completely honest. Uh, just obviously because, you know, we, we haven't really got the car. Um, you know, we haven't got a car that can fight still at the moment. Uh, he's not happy with the brake stability either, which is a bit of a shame. But I don't think we can really do anything with that. Uh, as we head into the Grand Prix. Uh, and Liam Lawson as well. They're seemingly much more happy with everything that he's got underneath him. Let's do this thing though. It's time for the first sprint of F1 Manager 24. Here we go. The sprint in Shanghai. It's lights out. And away we go. Well immediately then it looked like Oscar Piastri got off to a particularly good getaway. Straight into the lead. As they make their way down in towards the first corner. As it's McLaren. Red Bull. Red Bull McLaren. As they make their way through the first turn. Lando Norris trying to hold it right around the outside of Sergio Perez. Which he will. So one McLaren making moves there. Maybe not for long. As immediately Max Verstappen will try and get back on a fight back there. Bottas seems to have jumped Liam Lawson. But Sonoda still in P18 there. As Lawson yet yeah, definitely still lacking confidence on lap one inside this game. So not ideal for him there. Dropping down the order. Zhou Guan Yu as well. Uh, making some progress 
towards the rear of the field as well then. But immediately just starting to see some gaps open up. I assume everybody is on the mediums. Yes, they are. Uh, so no, obviously, real element of strategy to this sprint as well there. I guess it really just gives us a good idea as to how, how far the mediums are going to be able to go as we make our way through this race as well. So we'll try and get Yuki uh, to get back past Shou Guan Yu as well then on this opening lap. Uh, but honestly, yeah, I'm expecting this one uh, to be quite a, you know, mediocre affair, I think is going to be the way we're going to word it there as we'll try and see if we can get a run out onto this back straight. Uh, I tried to go really aggressive with the AI uh, in the Ferrari livestream last night. Didn't work. They both lost places on lap one, which is not ideal as Zhou Guan Yu... Uh, we'll make the move on the inside of Lawson as well there. So really a bad start uh, by Liam in the end. Just really lacks confidence on lap one, you know, to get the elbows out with the other drivers here, which is a bit of a pain. And you can already see a two-second gap opening ahead of Zhou Guan Yu there. I just feel this is going to be a weekend um, that ultimately doesn't suit the car too well. As you can see, Yuki already pushing his teammate along down through those final couple of corners. Um, but yeah, you know, the sprints as well, you know, we don't put much emphasis on them uh, inside kind of our normal F1 series as well. So I don't think we're going to put too much focus in, you know, until we're in a position, you know, where we can really fight. You know, I don't think we're really going to be able to do a lot with them early on in this game. And ultimately as well, you know, both drivers I don't think are going to really have the pace, you know, to be in a position where they're going to make a lot of difference as well. They're basically just 19 extra laps of free practice for us inside this game there is hopefully we're going to see Lawson get a run then on Zhou Guan Yu this time ran down in towards the final couple of corners Yuki as well is going to get a pretty good view as this all unfolds temporarily three wide there as Lawson will make the move down the inside Yuki Tsunoda goes right around the outside of Zhou Guan Yu as well there so beautiful stuff early on we'll get him just to calm back down then uh, at this early stage of the race tire management as well is going to be one that is really, really difficult there. Is, yeah, Zhou Guan Yu, he gained a couple of places on the opening lap. Immediately, he is going to go and lose them again there. So, are we going to be able to try and really close in on those cars in front? I'm kind of happy to let them fight with each other. As all, Ricardo's gone for a spin. What has the Australian done? He's having a really good weekend in that v Cup. had a really good season so far. He's done a Valtteri Bottas. He was lucky to get not okay. get collected by the Merc behind. That was very, very close there. And, well, luckily, I think they're all able to keep going then. But a big gap opening up uh, between Ricardo and the top nine runners. So any slim chance we had of points as well this afternoon uh, has been completely evaporated. Luckily, this has brought Liam back a bit closer to the cars in front. Uh, but Yuki Sonoda as well there trying to look for a move on his teammate, which he'll get. So Sonoda now up into P17 then of the race. Uh, they seem to be pretty even on their tyre wear as well, though. So I guess that's a good thing early on. Tyres actually look like they could go quite a long way in this sprint as well. So honestly, I'm tempted. We're not going to score points in this sprint. I'm tempted just to sacrifice Liam here and see how far a set of soft on pound tyres could go. So then at least we know uh, as we head into the Grand Prix. I mean, there's no bonus point for, you know, taking fastest lap in the sprint or anything like that. I mean, we've got so many sets of soft compound tyres as well. We may as well kind of see just how far they can actually last in a race like this. Um, because we might be able to go soft medium as we move into the real Grand Prix as well. Though I guess tyre temperature management is going to be the other really, really critical thing here. And yeah, Lawson is really struggling anyway uh, to do a lot early on to really make much of an impact here. He's already dropped places uh, behind Yuki there, as you can see. Speaking of which, Yuki Sonoda around the outside of a Haas car. He's going to move. So Yuki's on the move in this sprint race here, which is good. So maybe we could get him towards the front of this group then. As Lawson into the pit lane. He's got 15 laps on a set of the soft compound tyres. I guess if they were still above 60% wear by the end of the GP, then maybe, you know, we could have the opportunity uh, to do that as we head into the Grand Prix proper. As hopefully it's going to be a nice, clean, tidy pit stop for him. 2.9. Not great. Not great, to be honest. We need to make sure uh, that we're doing more pit stop training uh, with the team as well there. But, yeah, we'll bring out Lawson. We'll obviously make him work those tyres quite hard into the stint. Uh, not that turn one and turn two here are going to make that too difficult to build up some temperature. Uh, but, yeah, let's just see how far he can go then uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon. Um, so he's, he's not really going to end up fighting anybody. He's 20 seconds back. 
with 13 laps to go, but it would be quite funny if he was able to move his way back through the order there as Yuki Tsunoda now up into P15. He's dropped a little way away from Logan Sargent, but he definitely seems to be able to make some impact here early on in the race. He's actually closing in on those cars in front and pulling away from the cars behind. I guess fuel management as well is the other thing we've got to learn about here. Um, yeah, fuel management as well is a really odd one inside this game because it really does feel like it can fluctuate uh, to some very big extremes, which is both beneficial and kind of a negative inside this game as well there. Uh, Liam, yeah, Gap is down under 20 again, so he's closing in, uh, but certainly not enough. Uh, and yeah, say those soft compound tyres as well really do seem to be taking quite the pounding early on. So Yuki getting back inside the gap. Uh, Bottas with a mechanical issue as well. So... Okay, so Bottas, yeah, really big issues actually early on. You don't often see drivers losing gears uh, in Formula 1 as well there. But again, just battery management uh, is really, really critical in this game, especially around a track like this as well there. So we've got a decent battle going on uh, just ahead of Yuki here. Sergeant Ricardo Hulkenberg there uh, as Bottas, uh, sorry, Albon even has dropped away from Hamilton in the Merc. So Ricardo down the inside, uh, sorry, Sergeant down the inside of Ricardo there down at T1. Sergeant, I think, is a little bit vulnerable here. We need to take this chance uh, to build up some confidence with Yuki as well. Speaking of which, down the inside, immediately he'll go on the Australian. He's obviously current teammate IRL in Formula 1. And yeah, we've just got to try and make those moves happen early on to build up that confidence for Yuki in the car. Uh, you know, because obviously, you know, that will have an impact as we move into the GP proper as well. Their tyre wear-wise... We're looking pretty decent at the moment as uh, Sonoda now losing, I think that's a spot to Magnussen. Ooh, that has car. I tell you what, they've not got a bad package inside this game either right now. So, yeah, Haas looking pretty, pretty racy here. Lawson, we may as well just make sure he saves. This what's happened to Ricardo then. He hasn't, has he lost end plate? Can't see anything peculiar on that V-carb. Oh, we, we're surely we're not seeing more AI that are going to peel into the pit lane. Over the course of this race. Surely that's not actually a viable strategy for them. They are. Ricardo's coming in. So for whatever reason, Ricardo is opting to one-stop a sprint here. And he's not just trying to do it for data or anything like that. So at least Liam isn't going to be last for too long, I hope. He's actually going to come out right alongside Ricardo. But swoops through uh, and into P21 again. Magnussen's dropped away from those cars in front as well. So I think it's probably in our best interest... Just try and hang with him. As well, we got multiple cars off. What has happened? Bottas maybe with issues. Let's have a look. Here we are then at the 11th corner. Oh no, it was it was Ricardo. Uh, sorry, not Ricardo. Ah oh, damn it, man! It was Ricardo there. Yeah. So somehow the two drivers at the rear of the field have gone and crashed into each other. Luckily, doesn't seem to be any problems for Lawson. Uh, but yeah, Ricardo there running into issues. Uh, at this stage of the afternoon. I think, though, you know, Yuki's looking pretty safely locked in uh, for that P15 at the moment. It might be worth us just trying to save a little bit more fuel with him. Uh, fuel management is really not good on this car so far. So, yeah, we've, we've got to be, you know, on, obviously where I've driven the Ferrari and that thing was able to save fuel quite easily. Um, it definitely doesn't seem to be the case so far with this car. It's actually going to be quite tight as we get to the end of the sprint as well there. So, yeah, lots to manage still as we make our way towards the end of the sprint. Lots to learn, though, and tyres as well. They're not looking particularly good. I think it's still going to be a medium-hard Grand Prix there. The soft compound tyres really don't last as well uh, as I think we were hoping here. Annoyingly as well, I think Lawson might actually end up getting lapped uh, by the end of this race. He's not that far ahead of Verstappen there, so we really don't want that to be the case. Um, before the end of the sprint. It's on Norris trying to look down the inside of the Dutchman. Not able to make anything happen uh, there either at the moment. But yeah, Yuki, after a really bad Japanese Grand Prix, where he never seemed to be able to get close to his teammate. This weekend, he seems to have found a little bit of fight once more, which is always good to see uh, as well. Obviously, you know, we'll be able to hopefully carry that confidence into the real GP as well there. Max Verstappen onto the last lap of the Grand Prix. Uh, and Lawson, he's going to go a lap down. Liam Lawson, he's got the Red Bull right behind him at the moment. He's got to move out of the way. Obviously, blue flags will be in full effect here right now. So that is a real, real shame 
I mean, we, we took the gamble on the strategy anyway. We were trying to gather some extra data. And we know, yeah, that the soft compound tyres just will not work as we move into the race itself there. We'll try and go on some overtake mode with both cars, actually. Because uh, we've got a little bit of that left still uh, to our devices. He's actually keeping Verstappen behind him, rather interestingly. So he might be able to do that as he makes his way down the back straight as well there. But... Yeah, that is a real, real shame for Liam Lawson. I want to try and keep him on the lead lap. Not that really anything will be gained from it. Um, but still, uh, you know, it's always nice. You know, if you know, if we had someone run out of fuel or something like that. So look, he's actually defending from Verstappen. This is not good blue flag racing at the moment, Liam. And he's going to lose the place anyway in the end. So Verstappen will make it through. Through the final corner goes the Dutchman. He is going to win the first sprint race of the season there. And continue to open up his world championship lead. Max Verstappen... Back on top here in Shanghai is Lawson crossing the line just behind him as well. There, I mean, Yuki's closed back in on Magnussen, so we might be able to get a last lap move as well between the V-car... Uh, not the V-car, sorry, our team uh, and the Haas driver there as Magnussen's actually closed in as well on Sergeant in front. We've just about got the fuel numbers back where we need it. And are we going to be able to try and mount a challenge down in towards the final chicane here? I'm not convinced we're going to be close enough, but we're going to try and get him to go for the overtake. Yuki Sonoda to the inside, down in towards the final couple of corners of this sprint race there. Drama right until the end, and he will move back up into P14 there. Could he actually challenge Sergeant for a move as well into that final corner? Not quite able to do anything there, but a late race maneuver. Can he get the run towards the line? Not quite. And he's just going to run out of fuel as we cross the line there. So we nailed that. P14 and P22 here in the sprint. The competition out there was certainly tough today. And it leaves many coming away from the sprint empty-handed. They ended up in P22. And that won't help their confidence whatsoever. Well, there we go then. Taking a look at our sprint race results. Max Verstappen takes the win ahead of Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc. I mean, yeah, it was literally four teams that scored points here. So... I, yeah, I think sprint racing early on in this game is going to be a difficult one for us there. But Yuki up four spots as well. Happy with the result for him. Uh, looks like we've got a little bit more pace in the car. Let's make our way then into real qualifying where hopefully at the very least we'll see both cars into Q2. Welcome everyone to qualifying. This should be a good one. The Shanghai International Circuit is notoriously tough on tyres. So expect to see that factor into the team strategies as they deal with this busy schedule. So as we head into this qualifying session, Karun, how do you think Lando's going to be feeling? They must be feeling good after their fast lap times in practice. Confidence can do great things for a driver, so I'm excited to see how they handle qualifying. Well, it's almost here. Qualifying, coming up soon. Well, obviously, we'll be able to do much more normal run plans as we head into real qualifying. Hopefully, that is going to play into Yuki's hand as well there. Both drivers seemingly fairly confident. Uh, I don't believe... Oh, no, we can set... We can rejig the setup again, can't we? So, we need to try and make sure that we've got a bit more braking stability. And I believe that will... Uh, how, how do we get more braking stability out of the car on this game? It is... Oh, yeah, a uh, toe out, isn't it? Uh, which will hopefully make quite the difference here. So, we'll get those tweaked... Uh, Liam hopefully will be happy with where the car balances and obviously Yuki as well. Hopefully we're going to bring him more in line uh, with where he wanted the car as well there. Uh, Liam, I mean, we're pretty happy with where he's at to be honest. So we might just try and make a couple of smaller tweaks as well. Um, but ultimately, you know, you want a little bit of straight line speed as you head into the Grand Prix. Let's get both cars back out there though, ready for Q1. Hopefully we're going to have the pace to see him into Q2. Maybe we could do it with just one run uh, as well there. But ultimately, you know, I don't really want to leave too much up to kind of, you know, the AI getting in the way and things like that there. So we'll wait for a kind of a gaggle of cars to go out. I mean, we've got so many sets of soft compound tyres still to utilise uh, over the course of this session. So, yeah, we'll send both drivers out nice and early on. And hopefully we can get a good lap time on the board there. I mean, we're basically just waiting to see how many other cars head out of the pit lane. Oh, it's Ritoma Miata trying to get temperature into the tyres, I believe, has gone for a spin. Yep, just on the exit of the hairpin. Not ideal for him, then, so that's going to be his first run probably absolutely ruined. We've got a car making its way out onto the track, I believe. I don't know who that is, actually, to be honest. Um, but I think we're going to be in clear air here, which is fantastic news 
ready for our first runs here. It's so important that the AI don't get in the way, um, as obviously we found out. So hopefully we're going to see both drivers get some, you know, set some good times on the board as well. They will man into the gaps. We'll see just how competitive they're looking against one another as well. Then is yeah, we'll ride with Sonoda because uh, we need to see him into Q2. If you know, if we've got a fight, if we get a bit of carnage for you know, sort of the drivers up towards the front, then maybe if we've got two cars that can actually fight with each other as well. Um, you know, if we say if we end up like 14th and 15th on the grid, something like that could be really, really handy for us. There is 24-4 and 24-2. We should be going quicker than we did in the sprint because obviously we've got the uh, soft compound tyres this time rather than the mediums. So that's a little bit, uh, you know, kind of, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll kind of see how things ramp up. But considering obviously we've now had the sprint race as well, Grip should really be on the rise here. I don't think we got any threat of rain uh, or anything like that as the weekend continues. So, yeah, a little bit of an odd one uh, so far there. 29-2, 29-0. So, Liam's definitely finding more pace. Yuki, though, uh, still not happy with the car there. As Logan Sargent has gone quicker than Lewis Hamilton. Things I was not expecting to say today, but there we are. The nature of F1 manager for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Piastri, though, immediately will go top of the board. So I'm hoping we're going to be, you know, quicker than Sargent. Maybe we can split those Williams there as Mercedes. Have they not opted for soft compound tyres? They are on softs. They are really, really lacking pace this weekend. Is that the final corner for Yuki? 34 puts him slower than Sargent. And 34 as well for Liam Lawson there. Right with Logan. So disappointment for Yuki. But Liam might make it straight through then that we have opted to send both drivers back out towards the end of the session because times are continued to tumble for other drivers. Grip is at an all-time high. Rubber levels as well are seemingly quite good on the circuit. So we need to see some improvements here. Otherwise, we can have both drivers out in Q1. We shouldn't have any traffic to deal with again. We seem to have remembered kind of how to avoid the AI and things like that here. It's just over 30 seconds left on the clock. We need two tenths from Liam to put himself ahead of Hulkenberg, but ideally we'd like close to half a second. Sonoda, though, is definitely a bit more of a gamble right now. He's really not looking particularly confident, but he does find three tenths through sector one. Yeah, Liam loses a tenth through that first sector, so not ideal at the end of that first split. Uh, but yeah, there is plenty more time for the circuit, you know, to continue ramping up here. Track temperature is starting to get quite high as well, um, which might play against us here as Gasly now will split both cars. So there we go, confirmation. Uh, most drivers now have had their times locked in, so it hasn't really been a last-ditch effort for a lot of drivers. As Oh, look at that, a big improvement through Sector 2. Yuki's finding pace here. Uh, Liam Lawson isn't, though. I think his lap is basically abandoned, so... It might be that Sonoda makes it through uh, at the expense of Liam Lawson. It might be that both drivers are right on the cusp, but ultimately the wrong side of the bubble. I think Lawson, though, is going to be out in Q1. But are we going to see Yuki Sonoda make his way into Q2 for the first time since Albert Park, Australia? Be really, really nice and build up his confidence once again. He had a good sprint race earlier on, so hopefully he's going to be able to have that pace in the car. One more corner to go. Yuki Sonoda up towards the start finish line. It is going to be a 1 minute 33 7. He just squeezes through a tenth and a half up on Nika Hulkenberg there. The only driver we got in question, I believe, is Pierre Gasly, uh, who I don't think is on a run either right now. Uh, no, he is not. So we have made it through with Yuki this time round. A little bit odd that it was one in sprint and one in real qualifying, but only just. And there we go then, Max Verstappen seemingly finding a bit more pace, uh, more reminiscent of what we saw last time out at Japan as well. They're six tenths clear of Lando Norris, but again, it really does seem like we saw in real life there that Lando is going to be his closest threat over the course of the weekend. Uh, but yeah, a little bit gutted uh, for you, uh, sorry, for Liam there to end up three tenths away. But Yuki Sonoda, the track really ramped up for him there towards the end of the session. Anything higher than 16th though, I think we can be pretty happy. Oh, we're really trying to study some of the data as well inside this game. You know, there's so much data um, that it can give you as well about, you know, how many cars are meant to be on the track and everything like that. Um, so we're trying to utilize that to the best of our window. You can see as well, uh, grip levels are pretty much staying flat now. I think they are slowly rising as the track continues to ramp up here. But Yuki Tsunoda then out for his first run in Q2. Like I said, we're not going to make Q3 here. 
you know, we need to find a huge bag of time. But if we can go quicker than, you know, Logan Sargent, a Rotoma Miata, even like a Kevin Magnuson, that would be really, really nice. You know, give us a little bit of a pep in our step. You know, we scored points in Australia and obviously have them robbed away from us. I would like to score points here as well. Um, you know, get back on the, you know, that wagon as well as yellow flags out sector two. Don't know who's gone slowly or who's made an error. Uh, but yeah, we've got to make sure it's Miata again there. It's all Paris that time around. Beautiful job getting out of the way. Thank you very much, Sergio. So Yuki Tsunoda, this first lap won't be in the bin then. Uh, but hopefully we will continue to see improvements there. As yeah, Miata, he's definitely trying to find the limits in that car. He's a lot closer to Ricardo uh, than we saw in Sprint. Uh, but he's definitely yeah, overstepping the mark still at the moment as Magnussen again goes quicker than George Russell. Mercedes, for whatever reason, have not got much pace on this game right now. It is really, really costing them here as fast forwarding on down in towards that final corner. Yuki Tsunoda then first time on the board. Hopefully it's going to be around the same uh, as those two. He did 24-4, 29-4. Not a particularly good run actually in the end. And he ends up almost a second away. What I didn't actually realise, uh, we made the mistake and actually put Yuki back out there on a set of warning tyres. So he'd already done, I think, at least one run on them. So as he makes his way back out then here for his last ditch run, hopefully we are going to see times improve once again there. Once more, we seem to be the last car on a lap in anger, but we need to find two seconds up to Danny Rick if we wanted to see Q3. I mean, there's a one second gap between Ricardo and Logan Sargent. The gaps on this game definitely still are, are a lot bigger than you see in real life there. Let's wait and see then what times Yuki's able to do. Through the first sector, he is going to be up, but not by much at all. Yuki Tsunoda is just not finding pace around this circuit at the moment. Rubber is high, grip is high, so he should be getting quicker and quicker. Track temp is slowly dropping as well, um, but it really does seem, yeah, that that one run in Q1 was kind of a bit of, you know, a, a golden lap for him there, which is, yeah, real, real shame for us, because I was hoping... You know, if he can get close to those other cars as well, then, you know, we, we can't really knock it too much. But, you know, I was hoping he'd be a bit more competitive here than he's showcasing. Only a tenth up as well in Q2. So, Yuki Sonoda, I think we're going to find ourselves 16th on the grid ready for the Grand Prix there, which is going to be a bit of a shame. Um, but I guess, you know, we've got to try and take the rough with the smooth out of the final corner up to the line. He will improve by a tenth of a second, eight tenths away there from Miata. We are out in Q2. The 56 laps of the Shanghai International Circuit await our drivers here in China. Shanghai has seen its fair share of clashes over the years, one of which happened even before the 2005 race had begun, when Michael Schumacher collided with Christian Albers on the way to the grid, sending Albers into the air. Shanghai International Circuit is a complicated low-speed track that demands high downforce. The series of rapid turns from one to four demands high grip, but the more the drivers warm their tyres, the more degradation they'll have to deal with. Well, there's nothing quite like it. Welcome along to race day. Well, here we are then, ready on the track for the Chinese Grand Prix proper. 57 more laps ahead of us, and it was Lando Norris that actually snookered away pole in the end. Verstappen got slower as qualifying went on in every single session, so I can only assume um, the grit levels continue to drop, although admittedly he was one of the early ones there. Leclerc, Piastri, and Carlos Sainz covered by six thousandths of a second at the end of qualifying is absolutely mental as well. But in terms of our strategy today, though... I'm going to go aggressive um, with Yuki, but I'm going to do the opposite with Liam Lawson. We're actually going to try uh, and start on the hards, see how far we can take them, and then we'll try and go with mediums later on in the race there. So it's going to be an aggressive call. We want to try and take those tyres to about lap 30. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the way I want to try and go about things today. I'm not expecting either driver to make up places early on. I'm not going to try and fuel save either. We're just going to keep it nice and simple as we head into the GP there. In fact, Liam's starting on the harder tyres. We're actually going to give him a little bit of extra fuel as well um, so that he can try and fight. But yeah, we're kind of hoping for a safety car, hoping for something crazy here. I'm not convinced we can do a lot else. Let's get in now. It's time for the Chinese Grand Prix. Final checks are being carried out by the teams, and it won't be long until we get this race underway. This could be an important race today for Lance Stroll. 
starting P8 is decent for them. Provided they keep the race clean, there's points on the table. And it looks like we're good to go. The excitement is building here in Shanghai. And it's lights out, and away we go. Very interesting camera angle there, ready for the start of this one. But let's wait and see as to how we get on down towards turn one. And again, it is going to be Norris and Verstappen side by side into that first corner. But again, the driver on the inside, what normally isn't perceived as the racing line, the grippier side of the circuit, is going to be the one that gets the jump. Max Verstappen straight up into the lead of the GP. Lawson, like I said, I'm expecting him just to drop down slightly off the start of this one. But Yuki gains one spot as well up past uh, Nico Hulkenberg there. So not a bad getaway for the Japanese driver there. As you can see, immediately Hulkenberg under pressure. Rotoma Miata sensing a little bit of danger there in that car. We've got split strategies up and down the order. Nobody has opt for the medium compounded tyre. So we've got quite most drivers on softs uh, and then a few of us on the hards. So that would explain why Lando Norris lost the lead uh, to Verstappen through that first corner there. But good, clean, tidy getaway uh, for most of the drivers. Again, it is just going to be about settling down into a rhythm here as early as you possibly can and kind of seeing how the DRS strains form. But how far will Yuki uh, be able to take those softs? How far will Liam be able to take those hard compound ties? And can we just make sure that we stay in the DRS range of other cars early on as well? We know we saw Yuki get quicker and quicker as the race went on. Yesterday, he's going to go side by side uh, with his fellow countrymen there, Rotoma Miata. In fact, he's not going to be side by side for very long. Rotoma Miata making the move and relegating him back down into 16th place there. So that V-carb uh, is still looking very, very racy early on. Uh, and yeah, they're able to capitalize on the opening lap of the GP. Lawson lost, I think, one place to Valtteri Bottas then off the start. But I think we've got... Um, oh, no, we have got one driver on the medium, sorry, there uh, in Zhou Guan Yu. So it might be that we watch Lawson slot back in behind Gasly. And obviously just focus on his own race early on. Like we said, you know, it is just about getting as far as we possibly can into the afternoon. And then taking a set of mediums to the end there. The one stop is not often the way to go around this venue. But could be really, really critical today. Uh, you know, if we've got a well-timed safety car or something like that there. So early on, things settling down rather quickly actually here. Lawson dropping back uh, into that final little group. But Yuki, he's still in the fight. Uh, with Rotoma Miata. So we're going to try and use this as an opportunity uh, to build up a little bit of confidence early on there, especially as he has seemingly lost just a bit there by getting mugged off um, by his compatriot. Oh, almost into the back of him down at the hairpin. That is not what we need to do early on in this race. So we'll try and get him on the deploy as well. Maybe we can make a move uh, through that final corner there. But yeah, this start works out really, really well uh, for Verstappen, who's already built up a two-second lead. Uh, over Max, uh, sorry, over Lando Norris there. Obviously, soft tyres versus the hards. He will have a clear-cut margin early on in the race. As there we go. Yuki clean around the outside of Miata as well. So making good moves early on here. Uh, as, yeah, the hard tyres should theoretically be able to go pretty much twice the distance of the softs. So 30 laps should be viable. It probably is actually the question of the mediums uh, in the middle stint of the Grand Prix as well there. So, yeah, I mean, if we can just keep Lawson up with Pierre Gasly in front. That would be quite ideal. I'm going to try and save that fuel uh, for later on in the race if we need to as well. So, you know, it really, you know, for us at the moment, it's just about trying to make sure we're in a good position there as Perez having a lock up down at 16. Now this is Sergio Perez. Nothing wrong Battling so with the Aston Martins. Very heavy on the brakes. Just unable to control the car by that point. Well, he loses the places then to both Mercs as well, uh, but able to keep going on the road there and still inside the top 10. Uh, as yeah, you can see, Yuki again battling it out with Miata in towards turn one. We should hopefully be able to get the grip right the way around the outside there, which we will. And Yuki just building up his confidence once again. There is... Oh, my God, a roadblock. What on earth has happened? I think that was one of the Haskars that had gone for a spin. And somehow we don't get a safety car for that. It was Kevin Magnussen. And we just kind of arrived at the scene of the crime there through the first corner. What happened to him? Just overstepped the mark. Creates a train for the Williams behind. Um, but luckily we are able to get going again there. And that works out beautifully for Alex Albon. Who's now got a little bit of a window over the rest of kind of the other cars 
in this racer and actually brings Lawson and Gasly back a little bit closer as well. So not the end of the world early on. We're all able just to settle back in uh, and keep going as we are. Not sure we're going to be able to use much of that extra fuel though as well this afternoon. Um, just because obviously how much abuse the engine takes around this circuit. So yeah, we'll just kind of settle in, uh, see how we're getting on here. Both drivers actually able to save a bit of fuel early on in this race. There is the Claire now has closed in on Max Verstappen. Is it time? I think, yeah, we're starting to see a bit of an advantage for Yuki on those tyres. I think everyone... Oh, no, obviously, he's on the softs, isn't he? So, Magnussen's on the hard, so I think we've got to go for it uh, and try and get past him. But, yeah, we're going to start seeing a bit of a crossover soon uh, when Lawson has potentially got an advantage over a lot of these cars in front of him. Field definitely is spreading out, though, just a bit early on, so... Yeah, are we going to be able to try and get Yuki a little bit closer? I mean, we've still got that train, haven't we, annoyingly? And which is working out well for K-Mag. Because uh, he's ultimately not under much pressure. We'll wait for the back straight. And then we'll try and see if we can make something happen here. Uh, on Kevin Magnussen. Which it looks like we're going to go for to the inside. Uh, we'll go Yuki Sonoda once again. Are we going to be able to make a move down the inside of the Dane? Yes, we are. So we'll try and use that battery just to pull away from him. On the exit of the corner as well there. So making moves early on. Sergeant's absolutely shredding his tyres as well. Uh, so he's going to have to box probably slightly earlier than we're going to have to. Uh, but making good progress here. Nice and early in the GPs. We're not even on lap 10 just yet. It is a long old race around this Shanghai circuit. Um, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see as to how things kind of map out over the rest of the stint. But if we can just make sure that we pull away from Magnus and get inside the range... Of Sarge as well. We might be able to go for another move there. And if we can just slot into that window in P13. That would actually be quite a good place. I would be happy to sit there for a few laps here. And just kind of let things mellow out uh, for a little while. As yeah, ERS usage as well is really not that high around this circuit. So that's a little bit peculiar as well. We'll go the push mode with Liam. And just try to bring that gap back down to Pierre Gansley. There is yeah, Yuki this time just a bit too far back. To really go for anything on Logan Sargent. But might be able to get a bit closer down in towards the final corner as well. They're back in towards turn one at the very least. He definitely hasn't got the pace against uh, Ricardo. But the road is... Oh, Yuki thought about it. Um, but yeah, not able to make anything happen just yet. Yeah, Sargent is definitely causing just a little bit of a train here at this stage. The race is round the outside through the middle sector. I'm we didn't actually quite see that move. But a good one done by Yuki Sonoda. And now we've got to try and pull away from Sergeant behind. Hopefully we'll get a replay of that. Because that looked brilliant. This one is involving Yuki Sonoda. Oh, what a move. Round the outside there. Had the confidence on the tyres. And beautifully done by Yuki there. Up into P13 he'll go. Yes, he does. Crofty bang on as well. Um, with his statement there. So, yeah. We'll just make sure, obviously, that we're not overheating the engine too much either. Uh, we might be able to get, though, out of the gap of Sergeant behind, uh, which would be rather nice. The gaps really do seem to ebb and flow still on this game. Uh, but obviously we know, yeah, we can recharge the battery pack as well a little bit later on. So we'll just keep using that with Yuki a little bit more. Just make sure that we've got him away from Sergeant behind. As well, one of the Haskars there, Magnuson, again, trying to look for a move. Is Gasly now reporting a mechanical fault as well. What's up with Pierre? Oh, dear, that's not what they need right now. He's just driving in a straight line, Crofty. Don't really know what you want us to make of that one. So, yeah, we're going to have to save now um, with Yuki again. He's got a decent gap, though, over Sergeant, but I'm not sure he's going to hang on to it. As, yeah, um, Lawson as well doing the same thing. Liam Lawson, how is he getting on in this race? 75% life still on those tyres. So he's going to be able to get them, you know, sort of about lap 33. So 33 on the hards, 23 on the mediums. That should be more than doable. Uh, towards the end of the afternoon. It is just about managing things as well. Sainz, new fastest lap of the day. I believe he's also on soft. So it's really not working well for Lando Norris early on. Um, but for us, it's not working too badly there. It's Guan Yu having a little bit of a lockup. Are we now starting to see Lawson able to make some moves in the not-too-distant future? As, yeah, Gasly... Uh, sorry, Sonoda even is not too far away from pitting. Logan Sargent, the first one, into the box from that gaggle of cars there. But yes, yeah, Sonoda's tyre wear. He's not doing worse than most people around him, but he's certainly not doing much better either. So we're going to call him in uh, at the end of this lap, I think. 
ready for his first pit stop of the day. I mean, he's basically, I think he's, yeah, he's exactly at one quarter distance, isn't he? So we can go 14 laps. I mean, we're going to have to go a long old way on that set of the medium tyres if we want to make this strategy work. Um, I guess he has pushed this first set as well a little bit harder. But yeah, that is a tall order towards the end of the afternoon for Yuki Tsunoda. Because even if he can just take that second set, he's going to have to take him half the race pretty much. If he wants to get to the end. Now, ultimately, we're probably going to end up a lap or two down uh, by the checkered flag here. So it's probably not the be-all and end-all for us. As Lawson now, yeah, is starting to capitalize from some of those slower cars as well. Hopefully, it's going to be a nice, clean, tidy pit stop for Yuki. Which it looks like it will. 2.9, yeah, is pretty good. Uh, pretty good by our standards on this game there. So Lawson, we need an opportunity to build up some confidence for him. His confidence is quite low right now. So we've got to try and make a move happen uh, on Pierre Gasly here. Because ultimately, yeah, he shouldn't really be fighting him for too much longer. And yeah, that confidence is just continuing just to dip ever so slightly right now. We'll go push mode on the fuel. He can try and use the power down the back straight here. Obviously, Renault power unit versus Renault power unit. To the inside, he'll go. Gasly obviously reporting some mechanical gremlins as well there. So hopefully, it's going to be a nice, clean move. And yeah, we're going to bump that confidence back up into the medium as well there so Lawson might get himself near the top 10 uh, as more and more cars have to peel into the pit lane there it looks like the soft compound runners though really want to try and take those tires as far as they possibly can so they're going really really aggressive on the strategy here which is quite a surprise to see and that might be how we kind of capitalize later on by just kind of staying out of trouble a bit more um, and you know kind of ending up where we end up there as Lawson now trying to defend from Alban yeah not a lot he can do in that situation there and again the confidence will drop back down into low so want to try and make sure that we're using up some of the fuel with both cars as well the yuki is not a million miles behind uh but ultimately yeah there's a lot of cars still that we just can't fight with uh, at this stage of the day so you know we're kind of in that position at the moment i think very shortly uh, we're gonna have to try and get the drivers to swap around as well there is more and more mechanical faults coming in this time around rotoma miata reporting issues got with the car. yeah no no idea what miata is struggling with but more and more issues then are plaguing other drivers up and down the order there so yeah lawson he's doing well he's getting those tires pretty much as far as we would want him to he's about two-thirds of the way through this stint uh but as yuki does get close i think we're just gonna have to obviously bring in some team orders uh as well here so yeah Okay, Liam there just struggling a bit with the front tyres. Uh, how far back is Sonoda, though, as we make our way out onto the straight? He's less than a second away, so we might be able to go for it. We'll try and build up some confidence as well by telling Yuki to go for the overtake, even though he knows his teammate is going to let him by. And there we go. No, they're making a hash of that. Liam Lawson parks on the apex there. Almost as bad as V-Carb managed uh, when they came together a couple of years ago. Down at, I think that was last year, wasn't it? Down at that hairpin. Um, but yeah, not ideal at the moment. But Yuki, he's still confident. He's still feeling happy uh, in the car as well. So yeah, we're just kind of letting this race play out at the moment. It's it's a bit of a slow burn, a bit like Japan. The sprint race actually ended up probably delivering a fair amount of the drama. But we did see a late safety car last time out as well then. So be interesting to see whether something like that occurs again. Because yeah, Japan was really... A very, very quiet race in the grand scheme of things there. Lawson just dropping back a little bit further behind some of the other cars as well. And that we were hoping he would battle with. But Yuki is in a really, really good spot right now. Just kind of doing his own thing. Staying out of trouble there. He's got the pace over a lot of those cars behind. And hopefully... No! As soon as I say that. What is wrong on Yuki's car? So he's lost one of the gears as well then. So we're probably going to need a penalty next time out. How bad is that looking? It's a minor problem at the moment. So it might be worth trying to get him to stay off of the curbs. But yeah, I think yeah, he's got he's got five seconds to Sergeant behind. I think we can afford to tell him that. Um, so yeah, Yuki maybe just compromised himself a couple of tenths each and every lap. But sure. doing pr very, very well actually on those tyres. They need to go to a bank lap 40. Um, so, then, yeah, we're going to monitor that one um, as well there. But still no one out of this race just yet. Uh, but, yeah, people just kind of settling in, trying to nurse their tyres around, see how well they're getting on. Um, 
as well. So next pit stop, obviously, yeah, he's going to be Liam Lawson. So I'm going to try and just get a, use a little bit of his remaining fuel uh, over the. Oh, we got we got a mistake. We got a mistake for someone, and I think that was Lawson, who's made an error. What has happened? Pierre Gasly trying to look down the inside. Oh, just a day late and a dollar short. And yeah, Lawson once again bears the brunt of an incident this year. So really not ideal early on. And I think he might have a puncture. Yeah, he's he's got a puncture, hasn't he? Front wing's broken as well, I think. So we're going to have to try and put a new front wing on that car. Uh, we've only got two left as well, so we need to make sure that we're manufacturing more of those. But that works out really, really badly um, at this stage of the day. It's terminal damage on the front wing, so the rest of the car hasn't taken any, which I guess is good. Uh, he's obviously going to have to bolt on that set of the mediums to take him through to the checkered flag there. But a huge chunk taken out of that front wing for Liam Lawson. I think, again, this is going to be another weekend uh, that's going to turn into a bit of a write-off there. No penalty! How does Gasly not get a penalty there for taking this out? I don't really know. The the FIA clearly are not, not on our side this season as well there. But yeah, Lawson, I think it is going to be a long limp towards the end of the afternoon. They're down into last place he goes. Um, but ultimately, yeah, won't have to do the entire race, I guess, on that set of tyres. Uh, but yeah, he's just going to be kind of hanging around and towards the back of the order unless we get something that plays into our hand here. Yuki's doing pretty well, though, still. On his set of tyres. Able to keep Hulkenberg at bay at the moment. So if we can just keep Hulkenberg back uh, until he gets to his next pit stop there. He's actually struggling a bit with tyre temperature right now. So not too sure what's going on with that one. Uh, but he's actually yeah, getting a little bit lucky with kind of how the lapped cars... With how, sorry, the cars lapping him are falling. I think it's worth though trying to undercut. And maybe putting him on another set of the mediums. Because they've done really, really well uh, over the course of this stint. Um, and say we've taken the first set about 20 laps so we could definitely take another set about 20 laps here as Alex Alvin back into the pit lane as well you know what I think that's what we're going to go with uh, with Yuki Tsunoda here we're going to attempt to box at the end of next lap because he has still got uh, the second set of tyres are ever so slightly more worn in I think we had to do one lap in sprint qualifying didn't we with them so that's not too bad he's up to P12 uh, it's Ricardo making a mistake down at turn 1 but yeah, the Yuki Sonoda then into the pit lane. Hopefully it's going to be a bit more of a clear-cut pit stop for him there. As Lawson, he's back ahead of, I think that's Zhou Guan Yu. Yeah, he's having an absolute stinker of a home race as well. So hopefully Lawson's going to come out and clear air. We'll get him to push on, obviously, off of the restart lap as well. Um, but can we get a 2.8 second pit stop? That would be quite nice at this stage of the afternoon. Why is Liam's... Oh, he's got issues as well. Uh, with the car there. So, yeah, really not looking like a good day out for Liam Lawson. Uh, it might be worth retiring the car before the end of the afternoon if there's too many mechanical gremlins, but I don't really want to do that. Um, you know, if we end up with a safety car or just chaos towards the end of the race there. But again, Yuki can push on that set of tyres on the outlap. He's come out just actually behind Hulkenberg. So I think Hulkenberg has obviously just pit as well onto a set of the hards. So we should have had a bit of an advantage again over him over these next couple of laps as well here in towards the final quarter of this Grand Prix. And let's try and get Yuki Tsunoda then making the move on Nico Hulkenberg here. Is he actually within a second at the moment? No, he's not. Um, so that's going to be quite difficult to do from so far back. Um, but hopefully, yeah, we'll make that move happen in to the next couple of corners as well. There is more and more cars diving into the pit lane, so we should be back ahead of Rotomo Miata. Are we gonna, oh, he has a look. He has a think about it down turn one. Hulkenberg there just making that Haskar as wide as he possibly can. Uh, and yeah, Lawson. Say, I don't really know how well Lawson's going to be able to get on towards the end of the race there. But, you know, he's just got to try and get those tyres to the end and kind of see where he ends up in this Grand Prix there. Uh, it's still not able to make the move on Hulkenberg, though, which is rather annoying. And we haven't got much in the way of spare overtake mode either, so... We've got to try and get on with this sooner rather than later. Hulkenberg, is he in the range? He is in the range of Sergeant in front, so I think it's better off that we just sit back out of this one. Um, but yeah, this is really not working well for us at the moment. Sergeant then will lose the spot. Hulkenberg back down the inside of another of his rivals. And now, yeah, we've got to try and go for it again. So overtake aggression is still set to high. But yeah, Logan Sergeant, he's doing a really odd strategy so far in this race. 
Um, he's on slightly more worn out tyres, so I'm not really sure what Williams are planning on doing with him. But down the inside will go Sonoda. Luckily, the American driver there leaves him the door open into that first corner. So move is completed. And I guess now, yeah, we just try and hang on to Hulkenberg uh, throughout the next few laps as well here. Then it really, yeah, just kind of, you know, burning slowly towards the end of the afternoon is again... Might be able to try to make a move happen down in towards the final couple of corners. Happy that we've seen so many overtakes made so far today. Are we going to see another one coming in? Not quite. So again, we'll try and go deploy and look for a move back down in towards someone here. I mean, we've been able to keep Sonoda's confidence quite high throughout the afternoon. Liam Lawson's has just been low all weekend. Despite how good a job he did in qualifying for the sprint. And the outside, though, is the other Haskar into the pits. Surely we can make this move work back down towards Serm 1. Oh, they're still side by side. They go 16 laps left of this Grand Prix. We need to try and build up a gap over Hulkenberg. But are we going to be able to keep the nose there? Yuki Sonoda, a big diving maneuver through Turn 2. Hulkenberg, again, trying to hook it up around the outside, but not enough grip there on his new tyres. So Yuki Sonoda makes it back through. Hopefully we'll be able to hang on uh, now and bring that car through towards the end of the Grand Prix, but really now we are kind of just waiting on some drama or some issues for somebody else here. I think we can actually box Lawson again and try and keep him quick uh, towards the end of the race as well there. There's Sergeant trying to make moves as well. Uh, yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll box Lawson onto another fresh set of the soft compound tyres here, so at least he can have a bit of fun uh, towards the end of the race, because ultimately it's not really going to make much difference uh, come the end of his race as well. There not many laps left though uh, of this Grand Prix. So yeah, things... Oh, safety car! Why have we got a safety car? Someone's gone. Yuki's got no tyre. What has Yuki Sonoda done? Magnussen's reporting a mechanical fault. No idea what's happened to him. Issues with downshifting. But what on earth has Yuki Sonoda done? He's got terminal tyre damage. He's got a puncture. So no idea what he's done. But we're going to have to box both drivers in then at the end of this lap. And the car's gone. Yuki Sonoda is out of the Grand Prix. I think he's actually had a crash with Sargent then. So I think he's he's doing fine at the moment, is Yuki. Logan Sargent trying to look for a move. No. Just completely into the back of Sonoda. And our first mechanical fate... Well, first retirement, sorry, of the year... For poor old Yuki Sonoda just got completely rear-ended. Surely that is going to be a penalty for Sergeant as well there. And, well, that is just heartbreaking. Liam Lawson into the pit lane. He'll go. This new set of soft compound tyres will actually work out quite nicely for him. But, of course, yeah, everybody else is going to get a free pit stop as well towards the end of the afternoon. Oscar Piastri up into the lead of the Grand Prix. So there might be a chance for some late-race drama still. Um, before this race is done and dusted. But yeah, we're going to make sure that we just save up the fuel. Save up the battery, everything like that. And I will join you guys at the end of this safety car. Safety car is going to be in at the end of this lap. So annoyingly, yeah, I don't think we're really going to be able to do anything still with Liam Lawson. Towards the end of this race. He's got plenty of fuel. He's got plenty of battery. But ultimately, I do wish that they kind of force all of the cars to, you know, kind of bunch back up together. Because it is frustrating and we were back on the lead lap at the very least. Um, and we may as well just push on towards the end of this Grand Prix. But yeah, it's a bit annoying that it doesn't kind of bunch up the entire field again. As you can see, I mean, there's so many cars that are just kind of stranded around the circuit here. Piastri still leading though, but he is on much older tyres uh, than Max Verstappen. So I guess we'll kind of wait and see how well he's going to be able to go. It's green flag racing for the final 10 laps then. Of this Grand Prix. And are we immediately going to see Verstappen try and make a move. Back for the lead of the Grand Prix. I mean we've got Sykes as well. Right in the mix. So it is all kicking off at the front of the field here. And once again a late race safety car. Really has provided the drama here. Inside this series. I mean we'll get Liam now with the tyres are up to scrub. Just to continue deploying there. But I think yeah we're much more interested probably. Uh, in the battle that is going to be going on. For the lead of the race. So we might just watch this. To the end of the afternoon as well. There is Oscar Piastri. Actually seemingly able to build up a little bit of a lead. Over his main rivals right now. Max Verstappen trying to get a run. Uh, down the back straight. Uh, is he going to be able to do it though? Yes he is. Verstappen comfortably back through. No he's not actually. A bit of Constantina and up. Uh, there's more mechanical faults being reported. By just about everybody. Around this circuit as well there. 
Uh, Piastri defends the lead back down towards turn one, but that time around, yeah, Verstappen makes it through, and it would not surprise me now whether we just see the Dutchman run away at the front of the order once again then. So it looks like it might be double delight this weekend for Max Verstappen at the front of the field. For Liam Lawson, though, we might just be able to get Pierre Gasly by the end of the afternoon as, yeah, we've completely drained the battery uh, as well there. So probably should have been a bit more careful with that towards the end of this race there. Lawson, three seconds now back uh, from Pierre. But, yeah, I don't think we're really going to be able to do much there as he just tries to use up all of the remaining fuel that we've got in the car. Looks like we have still got a battle, though, for the lead uh, as Verstappen and Carlos Sainz still seem to be duking that one out. We've actually got a three-way scrap. Uh, up towards the front of the field there as Verstappen now drops back slightly. So could we see a non-Red Bull win early on in the campaign? Could it be Sainz? Could it be Lando Norris here battling it out with just three laps to go of the Grand Prix? Here we go. Norris trying to look down the inside of his former McLaren teammate. He's going to have a look to the outside into the corner and Sainz kind of gives it up for him. Okay. So now you can see, yeah, Lando Norris with a bit of a lead at the front of the order as well. So there is definitely some late drama kicking off. But I think Norris has got the pace to pull away here. Just two more laps to go of this Grand Prix. And Lando Norris now comfortably out in front of this Grand Prix there. Verstappen three seconds back as we start the final lap of this race. For us, ultimately, it is going to be a rather lonely P18 finish there. But drama for uh, Yuki Tsunoda, of course, getting absolutely clattered by Logan Sargent as well. They're really a weekend to forget for us. And obviously, we'll have to assess when we get back to the factory how much damage has been done to the car as well there. But in towards the final couple of corners of this Grand Prix, Lando Norris, I think that is going to be his first race victory of the season, isn't it? Charles Leclerc, I believe, took the win back at Jeddah. Uh, but apart from that, of course, it has just been the Verstappen show all season long up to this point. Down the back straight one final time. Lando Norris, he, of course, in this alternate universe, has never tasted victory in his Formula 1 career so far. McLaren got absolutely tranked by Red Bull last time out. But they've returned here to Shanghai. A circuit that has clearly suited them quite well this weekend. Out of the final corner. Lando Norris is a Formula 1 Grand Prix winner. With Max Verstappen following home in P2. Carlos Sainz in third. They're ahead of the other McLaren, Red Bull and Ferrari. Crofty happy to see that. Beautifully driven race there. Yes, the safety car kind of helped him out towards the end of the afternoon. But I don't think they can really complain. And there we go. Lando Norris looking very, very happy when all is said and done there. Lawson, I think he's going to be the last card across the finish line. He's basically got an entire lap still to do here come the end of the afternoon. But ultimately, couldn't quite get to the rest of the field. It's P18 in the end. I guess at least he got to the checkered flag. Sometimes I think you just have to accept that it's not going to be your race. It's been a very frustrating day for them, and they leave without any points. That's not the sort of performance we'd expect to see, really. Lando Norris certainly loves a podium, heading up there now to celebrate again. That sees them double their win tally for this season. They'll be delighted with that. And that's the podium complete for the Chinese Grand Prix. Well, Karun, how do you think they'll be feeling in the team garage at the end of that? They'll be disappointed. Neither driver really shone here, it has to be said. And there's quite a bit of work to be done, but they'll be well aware of that. Coming up next, the teams will be taking a trip to the Sunshine State. The Hard Rock Stadium is laying down the track for a captivating race at the Miami Grand Prix. Well, there we go then. It's always a bit interesting when you get someone that isn't Max Verstappen that takes a victory in the F1 games right now. And Lando Norris is the one that is able to get it this weekend there. Verstappen P2, like we said, ahead of Sainz though. It was McLaren, Red Bull, Ferrari. McLaren, Red Bull, Ferrari there with both Aston Martins and both Mercedes rounding out the top 10. So no big surprises. I guess, yeah, the disappointing one, Sargent and Sonoda. Both failing to see the chequered flag. That means in terms of the championship, the gap at the top has really been cut down, actually. 13 points in it between Verstappen and Lando now, with Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. One point between them. 
Uh, obviously, still no points on the board for us. We know it is possible. And hopefully, if we can bring some big upgrades in the next couple of rounds, we will be able to get into that fight there. 13 points in it between Red Bull and McLaren as well at the front of the field. So it was actually, yeah, sorry, McLaren um, that have won two Grand Prix as well this season. Obviously, back uh, in Jeddah as well there. So maybe what I said about Lando's first win was completely wrong. In fact, I could double check that right now. Yeah, Lando Norris has taken two wins so far in this campaign and has taken sp uh, sprint uh, podiums in every single race as well so far this season. Pit stop challenge wise, McLaren top of the board there. We didn't get either driver inside the top 10 this weekend. Uh, so no points awarded to us as McLaren now leading that title ahead of their big rivals. We're still ahead of Sauber and Haas, which I guess is good. But yeah, 2.6 was the highlight of our weekend there. Thank you all so much for watching, though. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. We'll be back tomorrow as Formula 1 returns for its second sprint weekend in a row, ready from Miami.